Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and after finishing Brideshead Revisited by Evelyn Waugh uh, a few days ago, uh, I really wanted to read um, for, for my next book, I wanted to read um, something by a modernist and someone that I was uh, more familiar with, and uh, I had it in my head either something by Virginia Woolf or Samuel Beckett, one of their uh, novels. And I used um, a feature on YouTube where you can um, post uh, comments and offer polls or surveys and different things. And so uh, I made a comment uh, polling, asking people, uh, anyone that um, would see it or watches my videos, um, what they might prefer, uh, a novel by Samuel Beckett or Virginia Woolf as um, something that you might be interested in uh, reading together or just might be interested in having me read. And uh, it was pretty fun. Over a hundred people uh, voted on the poll and there was a clear winner. It was Virginia Woolf. Uh, it was about a 60-40 uh, split. So not a landslide either way, but uh, Virginia Woolf came out ahead, and I thought I would show you uh, the book that I picked, but also a few novels by Samuel Beckett and a few novels by uh, Virginia Woolf. I'll start with The Loser, Samuel Beckett, and I actually have, um, I've read Samuel Beckett much more than Virginia Woolf, and I have um, a little bit, I have a larger collection. Um, I think Samuel Beckett is pretty much known as a playwright. Uh, most commonly associated with uh, Waiting for Godot, but I just love his novels. Uh, as far as um, like that really typical modernist novel, uh, usually uh, for the 20th century, uh, Ulysses by James Joyce comes to mind. And for my money, for my reading pleasure, um, if I had to think of a novel that maybe isn't comparable, but uh, is certainly evoked when you think about the modernist novel. And for Samuel Beckett, it's his trilogy, and it's Malloy, Malone Dies, and The Unnameable. Um, and it just uh, checks off a lot of those um, checkboxes. Uh, being, being experimental, um, Taking, being daring and taking chances, having beautiful language that's still uh, strange and perplexing. Um, this, of course, is very different than U Ulysses. I'm not saying that um, they're similar books at all, but um, I would turn to this uh, much more. But this isn't what I was thinking. I, I wanted to read something more of a typical novel length 300, 400 pages, something relatively uh, short. And uh, Samuel Beckett has two other great novels that really um, hit what I was looking for. I've read, I've read all of these, but um, uh, Watt and Murphy. I love that so many of his books um, have these great names like Malloy, Malone, Murphy. Watt. It does make me kind of uh, confuse the books because um, uh, the uh, names all feel kind of uh, similar. It also really gives you that feeling um, <clears throat> that all of these books are all, uh, inhabiting the same that same strange dark world that Samuel Beckett um, seems to create often. Um, Mercier and Camier, if that's if that's how you say it, um, Mercier and Camier. I say Mercier and Camier, and this is um, a novella, and it's a great companion to Waiting for Godot. You have um, um, Vladimir and Estragon just waiting around for Godot, and in this book with Mercier and Camier. Uh, we have two very similar uh, characters, and also um, the characters have um, 
similar relationships, the relationship bet between Mercier and Camier and uh, Estragon and Vladimir. But in this book, which is, um, it almost feels like a novelized uh, version of Waiting for Godot, but instead of waiting, this book is them um, walking. So they're, they're going somewhere in search of somebody instead of waiting for somebody. And uh, it reads very similarly. It has that same uh, comedic sensibility, that really strange, absurd um, kind of comedy that um, Samuel Beckett did really well. Um, again, now this would be too short for what I was looking for. And then there's, um, I'll just show these, but either like um, short stories or um, experimental writing pieces, um, at least these two, uh, how, how it is, how it is, look at that title, the cover, and uh, company, ill seen, ill said, worst wood ho, so this is late, late Samuel Beckett, you get that uh, stripped down, bare bones, um, kind of crystal, language um, to an extreme point uh, especially this one is when um, my, my enjoyment falls um, it's an exagger it's an exaggerated version of Samuel Beckett written by Samuel Beckett uh, and then some of his earlier works and the, the, these are short story collections but more pricks than kicks um, and then this is a recent publication, and it's Echoes Bones, which um, is described as uh, one, one of his early works that he um, intended to have published in this collection. It was going to be the ending piece, and either it was, it, it didn't make the cut. Uh, Samuel Beckett might have said that it was too daring or too experimental, and the publishers might have said that it just didn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that same kind of feeling. It's a, a character who's uh, dead and uh, like brought back to life and hanging out at a cemetery, interacting with strange characters. Um, and so yeah, um, if if I was if I was to pick a Samuel Beckett novel, it would have been either Watt or Murphy, and I'm not really sh sure. I, I decided, um, or I didn't decide, I, it was pulled that I'm not reading Samuel Beckett. And uh, for Virginia Woolf, uh, I did have a few more of her books. I, I sold them at the beginning of the year, um, but I'll, I'll show you what I have. And this is just that uh, phenomenal uh, essay, A Room of One's Own. And then the two novels, I have Mrs. Dalloway, uh, A Day in the Life, absolutely beautiful. And then The Waves. Um, and for Mrs. Dalloway, uh, for, for, for Virginia Woolf, she, for my money, she really is just the most beautiful writer in the English language. Um, Virginia Woolf and John Keats I, I think I've I've never read anything more um, just genuinely be beautiful. And for Virginia Woolf, um, on top of uh, the beautiful language, it's not it's not just this uh, uh, style. It's not a flashy uh, affectation. They're substantive. They're th thought provoking, and um, there's psychological depth and perceptive, uh, so perceptive of the world um, around Virginia Woolf and around the, the characters of the world that she created inhabits. Um, and like all these modernists, um, like, like James Joyce or Beckett or Proust, um, daring and new. It, it, She's uh, using literary devices 
um, to evoke emotions in a, in a, in a new way, in a different, different way. Um, and I've chosen the waves. I'm going to read the waves. And uh, I, re I read this years ago. It's, uh, it's a collection of like five or six people talking, um, talking amongst themselves. Um, and it, as far as literary device, it, it has that um, like internal narration or it, it feels like these characters are kind of bodiless. The, the the way that um, in a novel it feels like uh, a play uh, I, th I think Virginia Woolf called it like a poem play uh, it's considered one of her most experimental novels and so this is what I'm going to read uh, The Waves by Virginia Woolf and if uh, if you're interested in reading along I'm going to be uh, starting today and also let me know if you're interested in uh, I, I, I often just sort of pick a book um, how, however my um, uh, whatever my whim is and then uh, after it's all said and done I make one of these videos but uh, let me know if you'd be interested in me um, making one of those posts like I'm maybe thinking about one of these books and we can uh, choose together or I can just let you know I'm reading a book and maybe you, maybe you have it and, want, and feel like reading it um, I'm not sure and the only other thing I wanted to say just from my own recollection when I think of the waves I always think of this play by Dylan Thomas under Milkwood and even on the back uh, Dylan Thomas called it a play for voices and the waves in this book and uh, under Milkwood, they have this feeling of like these, these characters are, I, I said bodiless, but like they're like these souls or um, these supernatural be beings or, or like fawns. The, the way that um, uh, Dylan Thomas and Virginia Woolf, the way that they're describing the world um, everything that's described feels like it's um, new like re really observing something that you're seeing for the very first time um, so yeah uh, that's that's what I'll say um, um, and it was fun I'm, I'm glad that I uh, um, try, tried that little feature on YouTube you can let me know if you want me to continue doing that and um, let me let me know um, what you think about anything I said, uh, but also uh, your thoughts on Samuel Beckett. If you have a favorite uh, novel or a favorite handful of novels, um, and then what you think about my choice of the waves for Virginia Woolf, and uh, again same thing. What what are your favorite Virginia Woolf novels? Handful of novels. Um, Short, short stories or uh, nonfiction, and anything like that. I'd be super interested. So um, thank you for watching and leave a comment if you would like and uh, take care.